I'm going to make some pasta. Okay, so a well. I have about three and a half to four cups of flour, probably three Just and a half. Just regular or zero, zero? You can use either. All-purpose works quite well. If okay. you're looking for a little bit slightly more tender, then I use the double zero, which okay. is just a little bit more finely ground. Okay. If you wanted to go 50-50 AP and cake, you'd be doing pretty close. Oh, okay. So that's a good combination okay. for the regular American pantry. Okay. Now, I'm taking eggs, obviously, from your chickens, I assume. Oh, yes. Look at those colors. Which are a little bit more golden and delicious yes. than the uh, standard American egg. That's one thing I always recommend to people. If you can find a farmer that grows eggs near you, which you can, yep. then you always should because it's a great product. That grows chickens that lays the eggs. Exactly. And then you do the well method, which you know yeah. quite well, which is to just stir in that flour from below as we're going all and the way And try not around. to break the well and don't do it near the edge of the table if you're an a beginner because it will go all over the floor. Even if you're an expert, it will go all over the floor. <laughs> and I've had that happen several times we when I was trying to we look cool. We don't want cool. a blooper today. Right, How about exactly. some olive oil? You want some olive oil? Just a little touch. Okay. Like and then what, that's a teaspoon? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, like okay. that. A like tablespoon. That? Perfect. Okay. And that adds to a little bit of its suppleness. Now we're cooking some asparagus. Which I think look just about done. So if you want to pull them and toss them into so, that shot. Do you hold it like this and see? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Does that yeah. look good? Looks good. Is this for the for the for grinding up or for It's for it's gonna go some is gonna go in the filling and some is gonna go on okay. the outside. So okay. I like to do a little bit of both. Okay. But they're still tender. I don't believe in the crunchy asparagus. I'll eat it raw yeah. and then I like it cooked. I like it cooked though, cooked just through. Yeah, okay. And I like it with vinaigrette, and I like it with just a little bit of ricotta, which I think is a really nice thing. I like asparagus I, any old way. Exactly, especially when it's right now from right here. So now the well method, of course, delivers you this now, and what you want to do is just bring it together with your clean hands. So no water. No water. No. Water is what goes in, and no salt. No. A lot of people are always wondering whether I'm going to season it. That's why you always have to very aggressively season your pasta cooking water, because right. that's the only time it's ever going to get that seasoning. Keep in mind, though, however, that pasta saucing is something that has to be delicate and light. Do you want to use this, too? Yes, please. So now you bring it together like this mm. and just press it. And you can see literally with one of these crazy mixers over there, you can make fresh pasta in 25 minutes, which for most people is a surprise because it takes at least 20 minutes to get to the grocery store and 20 minutes to get back. So the whole idea of buying and something... And not to say the, the $4 gas and right. the car, the wear and tear and on the, the car. the footprint and all the and, pain. Exactly. Well, if you can make it just like this with stuff that you have in your house, which is relatively easy to do. Now, the trick is to take this kneading process and to make it that elastic, you don't really get an al dente bite to fresh pasta, but if you really work the gluten, which is what happens when you introduce this liquid through the egg into the flour and stretch it by moving it like this, if you can develop that gluten, it'll give you a kind of a, a chew to it that's a little bit more leathery, not al dente like the nice bite of a spaghetti. Should now. I do anything with the ricotta? Well, yes. Now you're going to make the filling while I okay. roll out this pasta. So we have one and a half cups of fresh ricotta. Exactly. Now what kind do you use? I try to get sheep's milk, okay. but if I can find any kind of fresh cow's milk, I'm really happy about it. And like two tablespoons of olive oil. Exactly. Mm. So show the kneaded dough. All right, so the kneaded dough looks like this. You let it rest for about, I don't know, an hour. And then, uh, then it's ready to go. Sometimes you have to give it a quick little knead one more time right when it starts. And then what you do is you cut it up like so. Where do you keep your knives here? I don't even there need it one. Is. There. And we give it a press like that. Now you want to mix in the asparagus, a little seasoning. And some Parmesan cheese. Exactly. Salt and pepper. Mm. Now this. I love this machine. All these asparagus, so 20. No, save about a oh. cup of them on the, oh yeah, you put them all in. Oh, put them all okay. in. Okay. So they're, the asparagus spears have been cut on an angle like an eighth of an inch, right? Yes. And then what you want to do is you want to go through the first biggest number, four times folding it. Ooh. Makes a little pop. And then as you go, you just lower the number one time. Don't you love this? This is the greatest I single invention this. of all time. I love the and pasta then... maker. Oh. All right, so then you roll this out until you get it relatively paper thin. It depends on how long you're going to hold them. If you're going to cook them within an hour, you do go on the very thinnest. But if you were going to let them sit for a little bit of time, then you might go on one slightly thicker number. And then roll, go up once more. Well, I, but, but leave that, like make the ravioli okay. one thicker lever than you'd imagine because okay. you'll challenge the wall of the ravioli's okay. integrity by the liquidity or the wetness Don't you of love the actual that? pasta. Challenge the wall of the ravioli's uh, The integrity, integrity. exactly. Yes, the integrity. Well, you don't want to do that. Mm -mm. Try to avoid that if you can. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to roll it and then cut it just like this. What are you like making this. for Easter dinner? Uh, we're making a grilled leg of lamb, 
uh, ramp raviolis, <gasps> very much like these asparagus mm. raviolis. So put ramps and in pastiera. there instead? Exactly. Okay. So these now here's must be done over here. We'll drop them out. Hold on, before we drop them out, just throw the little asparagus okay. in like that. We have some. We've, so we had some that we made, but here's yeah. how you do it. You take it like this. You'd put a little bit less ravioli filling in than you'd imagine when you're making them for the same reason that you put a little bit less sauce on them than you'd imagine when you're saucing any Italian pasta. Because it's about the noodle itself, and we look at everything else as the condiment to that magnificent noodle, which right. gives us that wheat flavor and that beautiful, chewy texture. So now Earth Day. Yes, Earth Day. Earth Day. You're celebrating at all your... Restaurants. Well, yes, we are, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and we're giving out seed packs to allow people to remember themselves that, in fact, they can, in fact, be involved in the gardening process on a regular basis. So we're giving out these packs of arugula seeds. Dear Earth, we are sorry. We are working on it. Please be patient a little while longer. We thank the world of you, dear Earth. Love the human race. That's us. We love, get a little sappy love, around the springtime. Love, love the human race or love, comma, the human race? Love, Both. comma, the human race, but also the love too. the human race as a directive. What a nice thing. And these are arugula. Where do the arugula seeds come from? Well, those are local arugula seeds born of, an, of the arugula selvatica kind that come from the streets of Naples, in fact. If you're walking around huh? Naples, what you'll always see. Yes. Oh, yes. Now, here are the ramps. Here are what uh -oh. ramps look like. Yeah, now, if, if, you've, if you've read the New York Times this morning, there's a big article about the wild ramp. Uh, and, and how it's slightly being overpicked oh right now my for commercial gosh. purposes. Oh, I, I have my secret stashes here and there. Well, so far, I'm not I haven't telling noticed anybody. It. I'm not calling the Times a liar, but I'm saying what they're suggesting is because you can get a lot of money for them, people are kind of poaching them like they poach anything else. How much are they a pound else. in the store now? Well, when they first start, they're 15 a pound. By the oh. time they get down to being really local, which is around this weekend, then they're four dollars a bunch. For Easter, they're twenty. Right, exactly. <laughs> they're exactly. Well, they're exactly. They're a little bit more oh, expensive. Oh, look how beautiful. So now we add a little ramps. We have a little butter, a little Parmesan cheese, the homemade pasta, and then. Now this would be a very nice first course this weekend. Absolutely. This oh. is exactly what we're going to have at my oh, house, boy. which involves just delicious, simple pasta, oh. as quickly as you can make it, just like that.